Hello, and thank you for coming back to Brain Shatter. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the more well-known Pimp My Ride cars. Hi, I'm Justin, I'm 19, and this is my ride. The Pimpy was Justin Deeringer. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. I drive a 1997 Toyota RAV4. Justin's RAV4 was one of the last cars to be done on Pimp My Ride in 2007. His was the 14th car done for that season, and it was the 68th that done out of the 72 total cars done. Been my ride, been my ride. So, some quick story, backstory on the vehicle itself. The Toyota RAV4 is a compact crossover SUV sport utility vehicle produced by Japanese automobile manufacturer Toyota. This was the first compact crossover SUV, and it made its debut in Japan, Japan and Europe in 1994. Uh, in North America in 1995, and it was launched in uh, January 96 as a new vehicle. The vehicle was designed for consumers wanting a vehicle that had most of the benefits of an SUV, such as increased cargo room, higher visibility, and the option of full-time four-wheel drive, along with the maneuverability and fuel economy of a compact car. Although not all RAV4 models are four-wheel drive, RAV4 it stands for Recreational Activity Vehicle. But now it stands for raggedy ass vehicle. <laughs> the first generation RAV4, known as the XA10 series, was constructed on a unique platform that shared Karina, which is a Japanese model, and Corolla elements, and it launched in Japan in May 1994. Design and development had commenced in 1989 at the start of production development in the second half of 1991 on the three door version and in 1993 for the five door version. In March 95, the five-door was launched and introduced to the U.S. in, 96, in January of 96 with standard dual airbags. The XA10 series was available in both three- and five-door versions. In the U.S., a two-liter engine, straight four, um, was producing 119 horsepower. Both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions were available, and the RAV4 could be had with either a five-speed manual or a four-speed automatic transmission was named the 1997 Automobile of the Year by Automobile Magazine. Uh, the 1998 model year, the RAV4 was slightly re restyled on the front and rear fascias, and a soft top three-door was made available. Power was increased slightly to 127 horsepower, and the power has been bumping up on subsequent models ever since. And overall, the RAV4 is a very nice, nice vehicle. Now to talk about Justin's RAV4. This is as ugly as it gets. All right, they're still pretty ugly. I have looked for Justin to reach out to him, but he has since seemed to have dropped off the radar. Justin, I'd love to follow up with you. Uh, so if you want to find me and reach out, I was able to navigate what's left of his MySpace and download the photos. I hope you don't mind, Justin. But this seemed a better way to preserve them than the broken links that are all over your site. Uh, I reviewed your AMA, and you mentioned that it took about five months to pimp the car. Uh, my wife's car took about that long as well. Uh, they put in about 20 grand of upgrades and the car was modified with an extreme dimensions body kit, black and silver two-tone two paint job from Matrix, 22 inch Da Vinci code rims with Pirelli P0 tires and a fifth matching one for the rear door, two headrest monitors, custom grill, blackout headlights and taillights pop-up champagne contraption for one bottle and two glasses, pop-up rose, LED candles, and a chocolate fountain. Uh, he mentions power locks and windows. I'm unsure if those were added or if he just mentioned them. And I'm shocked that the show, show actually didn't show his rear door at all. But in some of the pictures from MySpace, he shows he has a red box in the red back cargo area. The chocolate fountain is mounted into the box and it says Love 4 on it and two, shows two subwoofers. The box also has the batteries and wiring controls for the car. Craptastic. To address the drama that came out of his episode, uh, his RAV4 was beat to hell by his exes. The key marks, that's the result of a bad girlfriend. But he gives up in the AMA that he had no girlfriends that damaged his car. He says the key damage was from scraping a wall coming out of a narrow drive at 15 miles an hour. His friend Michael Rodriguez on Twitter uh, responded to me and he said that while Justin said the car was in a three car crash here is a result of a three car pileup right here you ever hear what they say about Asian drivers it's true uh, Justin was told by his M MTV that they should damage his car a little bit more so his friends that were on the show with him 
and himself beat his own ride with a bat. Uh, Michael said he wasn't there and he wasn't involved. Just informed after the fact. For the show, I noticed they rehinged his hood to allow the front hood to open backwards, and they put in an extra piece with a white screen under the hood for the projector to show movies on. So what are we talking about? In later picks, he has the hood open normally and mentions that the only screen he was left with was his two headrest screens. Uh, in one of the photos I've got, he has a TV attached to the inside of the rear door at a show, um, but I think he added that after the fact. Oh, dang! Now, if you look at the hood as the exhibit just flipped it forward, you'll notice that there is no hinges at the back portions, which, if that was going to be the case, you would need a way to cl uh, click the hood down and secure it. I think they completely removed that and put his hood back to normal. On this episode, if it wasn't completely obvious, they did a lovesick, lonely guy theme. Right here behind the seat, I'm going to install a long stem rose dispenser. All Justin has to do is get the girl in the back seat, and boom, a single red rose rises up right next to her. That's not the only thing that's going to be rising. <laughs> Owner. Uh, he said that they removed many items that they showed on the car, such as the drive-in theater and the champagne uh, glass pop-up setup. Good date movie. I recommend my favorite. She drives me bananas. I'm sorry, Jane, but you're not the one. Molly! <laughs> Touching, isn't it? The car took about five months to, for him to get it back, which is similar to what we dealt with. Once his ride was all pimped up, Exhibit brought on a Playboy Playmate for Justin to try to impress with his new car. They brought on the March 2005 playmate, Jillian Grace from Conway, Arkansas. You got somebody I want to introduce you to. What's up? All right, let me introduce you to her. It's my man, Justin, right here. This is Jillian. Yeah. Hello. Nice, right, to, nice to finally meet you. Meet you. It's on. <laughs> so, would you like to see the back seat of my car? Definitely. Let's check it out. I don't think Justin made any progress with her. But uh, Jillian has a daughter with actor David Spade and lives in St. Louis. Exhibit's personal gift to Justin was a Boca, or Boche, uh, personal concierge service. I can't find any information on the thing, so I'm guessing it's no longer a thing. Uh, he also has some photos of his RAV4 showing Lamborghini-style front doors now, so I think he really did love his car and he was working to keep adding on to it. He mentions that he has since added about $20,000 to his car after the fact. The Lamborghini doors and underglow were not mentioned on the show, so with the personal experience, that doesn't negate that Gas installed those, but I doubt it. It looks like Justin was a member of the Taking Over Car Club. I think it's still an active club in the Southern California area. I got the recording. It's done. 
thing, bro. Done. <laughs> cool. <laughs> fire, 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 fire. <laughs> I don't know how we can do it. Yes, sir. Hold on. This is uh, something that happened out of Zandon. I just think just a couple of days ago, we took a... Oh, at least... Can you hear that, No, sir. Can I pull it? Let me pull that. Well, it's probably most of the way. If you think it's fine, just point out where it is. But it's all... It's on the floor there. See the floor? Yeah, it should be right here. Yeah, but I think it's to the far right there. Yeah. So, have you guys seen something like this before? Not all kind of vehicle. We got a lot of auto cars, but not this kind of vehicle. What's going on? I don't know. It was a pimp my ride truck. It was a pimp my ride truck. Yeah. Thank you, MTV. So thanks, MTV, for pimping my ride. How long ago did it get done? Uh, probably about five years ago. Oh, so it's been a while. So, but yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. So what happened? You're, you're I was driving. driving. I noticed uh, my sound system was turned off. And then I, I turned around, made a U-turn right over here, and all of a sudden I started smelling smoke. So I just parked that as fast as I can, turned it off, that and got it out. Where did you see smoke coming from the first From the back. back. I was coming all the way from the back? And yeah. it has a hydraulic system. We don't know if it could be hydraulic system yeah. or obviously the car has so much electrical. Yeah. Where's the food store? Is that the tank there? What is that? Uh, that's the subwoofers. Okay, there's the subwoofers. Yeah. Okay. Just got a piece of glass over the front and only radiates one direction. Yeah. yeah. So the battery should be underneath. Underneath the seat, sir? Underneath, no, underneath this, uh, this, where the compressors are. Okay, is that under there? Behind the compressors, that should be the batteries. For what? Uh, for the compressors. You've got this air compression system thing, so how so will the car jump? Well, kind of, yeah, no, not off the ground, it just raises it, lifts it, lowers it. All in all, I think Justin got a good car out of the experience, and sometimes they go as easily as they come, and it's a shame. Oh, that was sexy. Bet you won't touch that button. Check it out.